what impact does the the distance that the ball is flying have on an You're talking architect. about Mike Clayton's favourite favourite subject. <laughs> I, I know he's just sort of shuffling in the seat as soon as we mention that. You can have a go, Marshy. I'll, but you, you, I'll leave it to you. How does it impact you when you're designing a new course that, oh, that may well, or may I not mean, be played by professional players? Yeah, it's 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 a sad situation uh, for my money, and uh, I know that Mike and myself have had this conversation on, on, on you know, many times. But it's just when when I first entered the the golf course design industry many years ago, our landing areas were at 220, so um, you know 240 yards, which was which was quite interesting. Now, and and we did a number of courses of that area, and of course, you know the the best thing we could do now is go back and fix them because all the bunkers are in the wrong place. Hmm. But now, you know, 35 years further down the track, it's 270 and it meters. So we're almost at 300 yards now. So, you know, it's been 60, 70 yards just in my time in the industry, which is crazy. Um, you know, it's been one of the great tragedies of the game. We were, I, and I, you, we were given this load of guff by the industry that if we were to um, go with all these clubs, these game improvement clubs, that everybody was going to play better. And, and of course, the ball would go further and they kept developing that as, they, as their theme. Good commercial arrangement to make more money. Uh, that's what you do when you're in that industry. But the problem is the player didn't get better. The handicaps have gone up. The equipment's more expensive and there's less people playing the game. So it was a great lie. It was just they bamboozled, bamboozled everybody including the USGA and the RNA.